Let's talk about dyspraxia and education. So why is dyspraxia and education important? It's important if we agree on the premise that everyone has a right to a fair opportunity to excel in the educational system. So why am I speaking on this topic? Well, apart from the reason given before, I actually have dyspraxia and I was diagnosed when I did my first degree. And my formal diagnosis came from an educational psychologist. For those that don't know, this is the professional person that can give you an official diagnosis. And additional to this, I think there are some other sufficient elements. And that is I have a degree, two postgraduate degrees and a master's degree. And believe me, that sounds more impressive than it is. Because the objective truth was that I was an average student. But I had determination, passion and desire. And I think these two aspects, having dyspraxia and qualifications, do give me some credibility to speak on this issue. So let's analyse this train of thought and begin this journey. So when we talk about education, what do we mean? So education can be primary school, college and or university. So I'm using this as a general term, but if there is a specification, it would be geared more towards university. And I know what you're thinking. Of course, education can be a subjective term. Let's give some examples. Reading Shakespeare will give you a form of education. Reading Edgar Allan Poe will give you a form of education. Reading James Baldwin will give you a form of education. And looking at a painting by Jean-Michel Basquiat will give you a form of education. I'm assuming you're getting the picture. And yes, education comes in all forms, but we are not talking about individuals, we are talking about institutions. So here's an important question. If someone has dyspraxia, what is crucial for an educational system to establish? I would argue it would be to get a formal diagnosis of dyspraxia. So let's break down the next set of questions in phases. Phase 1. Why is it important to get an official diagnosis? Phase 2. What are the benefits of a diagnosis? And Phase 3. What should the role of education be within the context of the student? So let's first answer Phase 1. So it's important to get a diagnosis because a diagnosis identifies that there may be certain systems of support necessary. So it also brings additional understanding for the teacher and it also brings additional understanding for the student. Let's give an example. So let's say Jack has dyspraxia and he is being criticised for consciously not remembering things. So a dyspraxia diagnosis gives us a rational explanation that Jack is not remembering due to the symptoms of dyspraxia as opposed to being consciously dismissive. So now we have a greater understanding of Jack's condition. So now let's answer phase two. What are the benefits of a diagnosis? In university, provisions can be put in place to reduce the barrier caused by dyspraxia. In the universities that I have been to, I have been assessed and given a plan of support. And this has been technological resources and a tutor. To my knowledge or to my experience, the tutor helps with grammar and structure. And this resource is not intended to give you an advantage. Its purpose is to reduce the impact of dyspraxia on your learning. Think of it this way. If you don't have an official diagnosis, you may not be able to access this resource. And let's finally answer phase three. So the role of education from my perspective should be to help empower you to be the best version of yourself. It should be to help you grow exponentially in the academic arena. I would suggest your learning style needs to be understood, your academic confidence needs to be supported, and you may need strategies to help with increasing productivity. And this should be a personalized plan between you and your tutor. And of course, the premise here is that you're eligible or that the institution finds you eligible for that particular type of support. And I want to emphasize that learning styles are so important. Are you a visual learner? Are you an auditory learner? Are you a kinesthetic learner? Or 
are you a text learner? And with that being said, I sincerely hope this video has provided you with some value.